Hey, bro, hear that? Hey guys and welcome to the first episode of After the Patch. In this show I will be taking a look at games that completely failed at launch and give you some quick impressions on their current state and tell you whether or not they're worth picking up now. Because these games failed pretty miserable at launch, they're usually pretty cheap to pick up now and only cost you around $10. Today I will be taking a look at Mafia 3. I think we all know that Mafia 3 had a pretty rough start with glitching mirrors, broken missions, a cap 30 fps frame lock on PC and horrible frame drops. Sorry about that, sir. Oh, it looks nice! There's two of them! <laughs> dude, you don't even see his. Dude! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Because of these issues, the game got some really bad reviews on Steam shortly after its launch, but the developers promised to be working on fixes. But did they hold up to their promises and actually patch this game to an enjoyable state? The short answer is yes. They fixed a lot of the issues the game had on launch, but not all of them. I'll get back to that later, so bear with me. You play as Lincoln Clay. An African-American soldier who just came back from the Vietnam War. He basically just wants to stay out of trouble and calm down a bit after the events in the war. But as you probably guessed, that doesn't last very long once he gets betrayed and some underground boss named Sal Marcano brutally murders his whole family after he refuses working for him. you straight. But it's not a game. This shit wears on you. Grinds you down. I ain't had a decent night's sleep in 43 years. Lincoln barely survives and is from now on seeking revenge for his loved ones. And you can really see his anger throughout the game. He certainly isn't amused and is from now on taking over the city district for district with his own gang. His goal? Killing Sal Marcano and taking revenge for his family. So much for the basic story. A nation once again And the Ireland long a province be a nation once again. Now I want to talk about the things I absolutely love in this game. First off, the shooting mechanics. Where should I start? They're awesome. I think I never played a game that actually felt so powerful and brutal when shooting. You get to play with a variety of weapons ranging from shotguns and pistols over assault rifles and sniper rifles and each of them play out differently. Getting into close quarters with a shotgun, blowing multiple enemies through the air at once never felt so satisfying. Wounded enemies curl up on the ground or drop their weapons when shot at their hands. The gunplay just feels really satisfying and picks quite a punch. Also, melee combat. Just wow. If you are sensitive when it comes to gory content, this game certainly isn't for you. Slitting the throats of bosses from the underworld or plainly stabbing them in the eyes basically became a part of Lincoln Clay's daily life. You are also able to charge up an attack and brutally execute remaining enemies that are standing between Lincoln and the sweet revenge. He clearly is one angry mother... trucker. <clears throat> Fuck you, and fuck Bark! You talk too much. Second, the soundtrack. The music featured in this game really makes you feel like you're driving through New Orleans in the 70s with some kick-ass tunes playing in the radio while chasing rivaling gangsters in your muscle car. Sadly, I'm not able to showcase any of the featured songs due to copyright, but the game features some very well-known tracks like Barry McGuire's Eve of Destruction, Painted Black from the Rolling Stones, House of the Rising Sun from the Animals, which you might already know from Wolfenstein the New Order, or I thought the law and the law one, I thought the law and the... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting distracted. For a full list of all featured songs, an artist just paused the video at this point.
Done? Okay, then let's go on. Next up, the setting. The story takes place in New Bordeaux, which is basically New Orleans in the 70s. And the game really features political relevant topics of that time, like for instance, as a black male your life is pretty rough in a city full of crime. The cops are always on the lookout for you, not because they know that you're a dangerous criminal, but more because of the color of your skin. You come across stalls with signs hung up on the door which read stuff like no colored people allowed or we don't serve people of color. If you decide to enter the store nonetheless, you get thrown out pretty quickly, or the owners might call the cops if you refuse to leave. Leave, or I'll call the police. Christ, I'm calling also, a neat little detail I noticed while playing was that when you rob a store, or start beating people up, and come back to the same store sometime later, the store might be closed and some policemen might be investigating the scene. What? So as you can see, discrimination is actually a pretty serious topic in this game. Where do you think y'all gone? Excuse me. While playing, you also come up to members of the KKK. So, yeah, you know the drill. You basically kill them, because fuck them. While listening to some kick-ass tunes on your radio, you can also hear some reporters talk about recent events like protests in France or see a report of the killing of JF Kennedy on TV. Throwing protesters wrought havoc throughout Paris's Latin Quarter yesterday. Police were forced to use tear gas to scatter the Bastille Day demonstrators. The annual holiday celebrates the storming of the notorious prison during the French Revolution. This is the first public disturbance in Paris since June, when the police back Gameplay. The gameplay of this game is, well, let's say solid. Driving feels like I would expect from a car of the last century and drifting is actually pretty fun if set to simulate it in the options menu. The gunplay, as mentioned before, is absolutely awesome and when it comes to missions, well, the missions. It's basically like go to point A, kill all the enemies, destroy whatever they are producing like moonshine and stuff and repeat until their boss comes to clean up the mess you just made. Now infiltrate the facility where the boss is yelling at his own people and kill him. After killing him, it's basically your place and your people will build your business in the just captured facility. Repeat this whole process to move the story forward. From time to time you get to do more interesting missions, but most of the time you will be stuck with killing gangster bosses to claim their territory. And that's actually the worst part of the game in my opinion. I actually really enjoyed the story of the game, but I absolutely hated doing the same task over and over. If you enjoy doing stuff like that, like in Middle Earth, Shadow of Mora, or any Ubisoft game, then this game might be for you. So overall, this game looks pretty good, doesn't it? I bet they even fixed the minor mirror glitch. Oh, wait. No, they didn't. Is it really that hard to implement a working mirror into a game? I mean, we've seen working mirrors in games 10 years ago. I mean, come on. At least they fixed the other issues, like people falling through the map and stuff. Or did they? Well, no, they didn't. At least it occurs less frequent than before. They removed the 30 FPS cap on PC. Also, the frame rate seems to be a lot more stable than before. So is this game worth picking up? At the time I wrote this review, you can get the game for around $10 on every major key store for Steam, while on console, it costs around $20. I had a lot of fun playing this game, even though it has some minor flaws. I bought it for about $10 and would buy it again for this price, but for $20, I don't know. Maybe wait for a sale, or if you really like what you saw, pick it up either way, because in the end, well, it's up to you. Thank you so much for watching this video, if you enjoyed what you just saw then maybe leave a like and subscribe for future content like this and feel free to share this video with your friends who are looking for cheap games to buy. If you want to support my work, feel free to visit me on Patreon and become a part of the Game Nation family. Any help is much appreciated. I'll see you in the next one. Game on, Game Nation.